Hi, Jeff Nelson of VegSource. I recently made a video about B12 called When Supplements Harm, and I mentioned that I had stopped taking B12 last year and I wasn't taking it for a period of time. Now, some people looked at the thumbnail for that video. Okay, it's a little clickbaity, but they may not have actually watched the video because some people concluded that I was advising vegans should stop taking B12, but I never said that and I don't believe that. I do recommend vegans take B12 and said so in that video. In the video, I mentioned that last May I had a serum B12 test and found my levels were off the charts after many years supplementing. And so I temporarily stopped taking B12 for the last seven or eight months. And I discussed some of the reasons people might want to be concerned about getting their B12 blood level super high. I spotlighted research suggesting an increased lung cancer risk in men who smoke and took a B12 supplement of only about 55 micrograms a day. And I discussed recent research showing associations between all-cause mortality and higher blood levels of B12. I also discussed how it's possible the associations between high B12 blood levels and death may actually be because most people get their B12 from meat. And so it might, be, might not be the B12 per se. But the fact that meat is well known to raise cancer risk could explain it. So that is some of what I covered in my first video. Today, I'm gonna to tell you the results of some B12 tests I took in recent weeks, and I was surprised by how much my B12 blood levels have dropped in just seven or eight months of no supplementation. I also took a urinary MMA and homocysteine test, which are supposed to be the best tests for spotting B12 deficiency and I'm gonna share my results there as well. And again, my bottom line message is to be aware of B12 and from time to time, maybe test to make sure you're not too low or too high. Before I show my results, a number of people pointed to other interesting B12 studies like this one. They looked at the use of different supplements in women who were receiving chemotherapy for breast cancer. It explored associations between various vitamins and outcomes for recurrence of cancer or death. And it looked at whether women were taking a supplement before they had chemotherapy and or whether they took it during chemotherapy and then tracked to see if there were any associations for recurrence of death, I mean recurrence of cancer or death. For vitamin B12, it found for non-antioxidants, Vitamin B12 use both before and during chemotherapy was significantly associated with poorer disease-free survival and overall survival. So for these middle-aged women receiving chemotherapy for breast cancer, those who took B12 supplement before and during chemotherapy, it appears they had a significantly higher risk of recurrence of cancer and a higher risk of dying than the women who didn't take B12 at all. Here you can see table three from the study, and I'll link to it in the description. As usual, it shows an 80% increase in recurrence of cancer and a doubling of risk of death in those taking B12 supplements before and during chemo. So that's a little troubling. I don't know why this would be, but perhaps it comes back to Dr. Clapper's maxim that you can't do just one thing to your body. Supplements are not necessarily risk-free, that's for sure, and they, that may be the message in this study here, that middle-aged women with breast cancer who are undergoing chemo might need to be careful with B12 pills. Here's another study someone sent called Smoking B Vitamins and Lung Cancer, the Chicken or the Egg Causality Dilemma. And this is a response to the Brasky studies that I talked about in my last video, that show that B12 increases lung cancer risk in male smokers. And the author here says that it's possible people who smoke take more supplements because they know that they're engaging in risky behavior. And so that Brasky and the researchers selected a group with higher risk to begin with. Dr. Brasky wrote a response here. You can read it. And it showed how all of this speculation in the first article was accounted for. Brasky is miles ahead of his critics I'll, I'll link, if you're interested, you can check it out.
Is B12 dangerous to people other than smokers? Well, one friend pointed to this study of 5,500 people, which ran for five years, and the B12 group got 1,000 micrograms a day. No adverse health consequences were reported with that high level, so this would seem to suggest that B12 is not a problem. We know the problems you can have from B12 deficiency are real. Now, let's look at my B12 numbers. Now, for my testing, I used a business called Life Extension, and I'll put a link to it below. This isn't a sponsored video. I don't have any relationship with this place, but I like this company, and what's nice is that you can go to their website and order just about any blood test from them, and then they will send a doctor's order to a lab near you, and you go in and give blood, and in a couple of days, they email you the results. So you don't have to go to your doctor and ask for tests. You can do it this way. And during April and May every year, they have a 50% off sale. So I go there at that time of the year. I sign up for a monthly membership. I order whatever test I'm interested in for myself or my family for during the next year. I buy them when they're 50% off. And then I cancel my monthly membership. When you or a family member wants to take a blood test, you just print it up the order and you take it to the lab. And it's very easy and, again, not that expensive. Or you could go to your doctor and have him or her order a test. That might be covered by your insurance, which life extension is not. So if you recall from my first video in May of 2019, my serum B12 was 1258 and the range is shown as between 232 and 1245. So I was above the upper range. I took no B12 supplements for the next seven or eight months, and here is my blood level of B12 from just a couple of weeks ago. I'm down to 395. So I'm fine, that's a good level, but I was surprised to see it fall that much in just seven or eight months of no supplements. Of course, we also store B12 in our liver and that's not reflected in a blood test. I don't think there's any direct way to measure B12 stores in your liver. I also had two other tests done, a methylmalonic acid test, which was a urine test, and a test for homocysteine. These are the two tests used to identify if someone has a B12 deficiency. I came back normal on both. A high level of MMA can mean that you were, have a low level of B12, and vitamin B12 deficiency is the most common cause of MMA production. You can see there are two results they give you for urine MMA, and you will find that your result values may be different depending on what lab you use and what reference scale they use. This lab life extension actually is sometimes more strict in their values and interpretations, and I think that's because they sell a lot of supplements. That's their primary business, selling supplements, but their model is to give tests at a cheap price to the public, and you can get free consultation with them. They'll explain more about what your numbers mean, and then they'll try to sell you some high-priced supplements. I know because I called them to ask about how to interpret these numbers, and they were pushing supplements in the call. But urine concentration of MMA is higher than plasma concent concentration, and so it needs to be normalized for urine creatinine concentration and corrected for the possible effects of renal impairment or dehydration. That's why they have an adjusted value here. So I'm in the normal range, and my homocysteine is normal. Over 12 is the beginning of high, and as I say, they said they had a great B complex they could sell me to get my number lower, but I'm going back on B12, so I didn't take their offer. What I'm doing now is I'm resuming B12 supplements of 500 microgram micrograms two or three times a week, and I'm probably going to test again later this year to see what that does. My aim is to see what level of supplementation keeps me maybe between 300 and 500 or so because I don't want to be going off the charts again. I looked back at a B12 test I did in 2014, and my B12 was literally beyond measurement at 1999. It was so high, and the range that at that time was set between 211 and 946. So after 24 years vegan, I'm gonna pay a little more attention to my B12 intake and fine tune it. I appreciated all the comments on the last B12 video. Let me know what you do for B12 and what your thoughts are. I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.